Kia ora and welcome to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and I am your host in this gang guide for Necromunda. Now, I've done quite a few of these already and the last one I did yesterday was actually Bad Zone Enforcers, which are new to new and exclusive to Necromunda um, from the latest issue of White Dwarf magazine. Now, Bad Zone Enforcers are slightly different to um, what I'm going to be doing in this episode with your regular Palanite and Subjugate Enforcers here. So... Basically, um, it's I've kind of done it in a funny, funny way round. I suppose um, I should have uh, perhaps done enforcers first, but I really was quite excited to see what bad zone enforcers were all about. So I thought I'd better get those guys out of the way first. Um, but these guys, um, we're looking at the Book of Judgment, which is an excellent book, by the way. Um, really essential to arbitrators of the game. Um, if you're into Necromunda, um, uh, you know this is definitely one of the books that I would say is the most useful. Um, it's a really, really awesome book, um, along with Book of Perils um, and, and some of the others as well. This book um, contains rules for sort of criminal alliances, I believe. Uh, it's got all of the Xenos um, Imperial and uh, Cursed Weaponry in there, as well as the Black Market Trading Post as well. So it's a really, really useful book. Um, the main thing, of course, that you're going to get this for is if you are looking to play Palanite Enforcers, um, and they are uh, the, the gang list for those is in this book as well. Um, so I highly recommend picking this book up if you don't have it already. Uh, it's also got rules for the Palanite skills, Palanite drill skills as well, and um, just generally an all-round great book. So um, getting into it anyway, what are enforcers? Um, of course, the Palanite enforcers are your are your friendly neighborhood cops, basically, in, in the Underhive. Now, these guys are um, kind of like Judge Dredd, I suppose, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of comparisons. I suppose they've drawn some inspiration from 2000 AD and whatnot. Um, Merciless, crooked bastards with um, very, very good weaponry. Um, and these guys clear up the underhive and um, just, yeah, generally sort out the riffraff um, down there. So, um, yeah, quite different to your bad zone enforcers. Your bad zone enforcers are kind of away from the precincts and they're kind of off doing, doing their thing um, in the sort of darker more dangerous, more gritty areas of the uh, of the underhive. These guys, however, the Palanites, are far more um, close to home and much better equipped as a result. So, getting into it now, um, in terms of the actual um, gang themselves, they do play slightly differently to the um, to the bad zone enforcers. And I would say that um, <clears throat> if you're looking at getting into um, Playing an enforcer gang, then this is probably the slightly simpler list, I would say, uh, if you compare it to the um, bad zone enforcer list. Um, and yeah, uh, in terms of where they sort of sit tier-wise, I would say that enforcers um, early on in a campaign are quite quite good, actually. Um, they have an awful lot of high damage weaponry, and um, basically they've got all the gears and no ideas. That is the sentence I would use to describe Palanite enforcers. All the gears, no ideas. What I mean by that is they've got all the best armor and equipment and weapons, but their general stat lines are trash and very, very average at most. Um, they're very expensive, they're very elite, their equipment costs a lot of credits, but what I find frustrating about enforcers in general, certainly, on, certainly late on in campaign, is that their stats kind of let them down. Um, they do have some unique skills, um, and they do have some unique tactics cards as well, which make them slightly more interesting, but I would say early on in a campaign they're quite competitive um, and usually seem to dominate quite a bit, but later on when people get more, when other gangs get more AP weaponry um, and get more, just more tools to be able to deal with enforcers, um, then um, things can level out a little bit more and the enforcers can feel a little bit lacking in some departments. Um, so there you go anyway. Um, I'm going to make this quite a quick video because I have just done the um, Bad Zone Enforcers as well. I didn't get into too much detail with the Bad Zone Enforcer um, in specifics of the actual guns or the skills, so I'm going to do that in this video. Um, and just give you a, a rundown of how the actual list works, um, what all the pieces are in the puzzle, how they play, and my recommended sort of strategies with them as well. So moving on. Right. So every gang has a leader. Uh, the Palanite leader would be a Palanite captain, and he's 140 credits. Now, 140 credits is quite a lot for a leader, especially one with very average stats here. However, he does come equipped with a stub gun and flak armor and an armored undersuit. Um, so you can um, 
you can give these guys extra stuff, but they do come with a little bit of stuff as well, which is quite nice. Um, now the Palonite Captain has a movement of 5, a weapon skill of 3, a ballistic skill of 4, strength toughness 3, wounds 2, initiative 4, attacks 2, leadership 4, which is fantastic, cool 6, will 5, excellent, and intelligence of 6. So pretty good mental stats, particularly leadership there, however leadership is your sort of least used stat generally, I'd suppose, in terms of the mental stats there. Um, but yeah, he does come with a stab, stub gun, he does come with flak armor and an armored undersuit. So pretty nice. Um, obviously that's a 5 up save normally, uh, going to a 4 up against uh, blast weapons there as well, just to highlight that. Um, and he has no weapon restrictions, so he can take heavy weapons, special weapons and whatnot. Um, now, important to know here that there are two types of enforcer. There are palonite enforcers and there are subjugator enforcers. Subjugators are basically riot cops with slightly more armor and slightly different access to equipment. Um, you can have a gang of just subjugators, you can have a gang of just palonites, um, or you can have a mix. But should you have a mix, you do have to abide by certain rules in that. So. The Palomite Captain can be upgraded to a subjugate, Subjugator Captain, um, and he's of course, um, it's just 10 credits extra, and he is also equipped with a stub gun, but this time he gets layered flak armor and an undersuit, so he's got um, a best, slightly better save, um, save throw than um, your general Palomite leader, so better, better armor by one, um, but they may only choose weapons from the Subjugator weapon list as well, and we're going to get into those in a minute. <coughs> so, moving on. We have the Palonite Sergeant next, which is your champion. Um, he's 100 credits, um, has similar sort of stats really. He's got slightly worse weapon skill, so uh, looking at movement 5, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4, strength, toughness 3, wounds 2, initiative 4, attacks only 1 though, uh, leadership 5, call 6, will 6, intelligence six, 7. Um, so if you're looking at the stats here for your Palonite Captain, just going back to that, he has a slightly better weapon skill than he does ballistic skill, so he's better used as a close combat guy out of the box, I would say. Having said that, it's up to you how you want to play these guys, but you know, having those stats kind of does dictate um, a certain style of play from the off, I would say, um, at least until you level up anyway. So your Palonite Sergeant, though, is, is just very, very average across the board. For a champion to have weapon skill and ballistic skill, four is pretty trash I would say compared to a lot of other champions so he's not very good he has however got two wounds so he is better than the um, <laughs> than the problematic gene stealer cult uh, acolyte or whatever he's called with only one wound however at least the acolyte has better strength and weapon skill etc so there you go um, and 100 credits credits is quite a lot and of course you can upgrade this guy to a subjugate sergeant for another plus 10 credits as well um, and that of course gives him slightly better armor so plus 10 credits better armor uh, and that's that really um, so there you go they get slightly different skill access the, the leader and the champion there um, but we're going to get into that in a minute um, and of course you do get um, uh, you know, your leader can activate with two, two other people and your sergeant can activate with one as normal compared to other gangs, that's exactly the same. Moving on to your Palonite Patrolman here. Now he's your ganger, he costs 70 credits, which is again, very expensive, but he does come with stub gun and armor. So, um, you know, you, 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 that's rolled into the cost of these guys. His stats, of course, for your ganger is uh, movement five, weapon skill four, ballistic skill four, Strength, Toughness 3, Wounds 1, Initiative 4, Attacks 1, and 7777 7, 7, 7 on the Mental Stats. So slightly higher than average on the Mental Stats throughout. But other than that, he's exactly the same as your Hive Scum, and he is 40 credits more expensive. However, like I said, he does come with a stub gun and a flak armor. So there you go. Um, but they're not very good, as you can see. Um, the stats are very, very average. Um, very, very average indeed. And of course, you can upgrade these subjugator patrolmen. Um, you can upgrade them to a subjugator as well for for a ten credits too. So, those are your three main fighter types, um, and that's really that. Um, now, from the off, I'm just just going back to the beginning now. From the off, if your leader is a palonite, um, then uh, that kind of de you you must have two palonite gangers in your gang. Um, at minimum. If your leader is a subjugator, you must have two subjugators in your gang minimum. So that is the restriction in terms of Palonites to subjugators. Um, 
I would suggest a mixture of both. However, I do see people running subjugated gangs to quite good effect, actually, particularly early on in campaigns, but later on in campaigns, they tend to get smashed, um, just from my experience. The next fighter type and the last fighter type is your Palanite Rookie. Now these guys are zero credits each because you can't hire them. The only way that you can get these guys, and these are your Juves by the way, the only way that you can actually get these guys is if someone dies. So if one of your gangers dies or you delete a fighter, um, dead or retiring fighter basically, you get a free fresh faced recruit. Um, and this guy does also come with uh, stub gun and flak armor, but um, oh, and, un and an undersuit as well. However, he can't be um, upgraded to a subjugator, um, so he is only ever going to be a palanite. Uh, and he's got juve-like skills, as, uh, sorry, juve-like stats as well, with average movement of five, weapon skill, ballistic skill five, um, strength, toughness three, wounds one, initiative four, attacks one, and eight across the mental stats as well. So he's actually really terrible. He's actually worse than a lot of juves in a lot of ways because he's got average um, initiative and movement, whereas normal normal Jews tend to have either better movement or initiative. This guy's pretty trash. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Um, fresh from the academy, that guy. So that is your, um, those are your fighter types in an enforcer list. Um, now, in terms of the skill access that they get, your Palanite captain or your subjugated captain does get brawn as a primary, which is kind of unusual, but like I said, he does have higher weapon skills. So worth thinking about. You could take skills like Bull Charge or Crushing Blow. Um, however, um, you do also get access to leadership, of course. In fact, no, you don't. Looking at it here, I forgot about this. This is actually a big problem. You don't get leadership, um, which is the only leader in the entire game, I believe, who doesn't get leadership as a primary. He does get it as a secondary, but not as a primary. The other primary skills, that you get three primary skill sets here for your, for your captain, and he gets Brawn, as just mentioned, Palanite drill and shooting. So he does get shooting, um, which is good. I mean, um, shooting skills are excellent, uh, and Palanite drill skills are pretty good too. I'm going to go through those s soon, and they're quite unique as well. Um, I quite like the Palanite drill skills. Um, so, yeah, you could build a sort of all rounder slash close combat captain, I think is probably the best route, um, uh, whether you want to go subjugator or um, general or Palanite. I would say the subjugators are better at that close combat role generally because you can have riot shields and stuff as well and they've got higher armor. So there you go. Uh, moving on to the sergeant, palanite or subjugator sergeant. Um, these guys get cunning as a primary, which is really cool. That means that you can have overwatch, maybe um, infiltrate, things like that, hip shooting. Uh, they also get palanite drill and shooting as well as a, as a primary. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, what more to say about that? Uh, moving on to the patrolman, of course, if you have a specialist, uh, the patrolman will get uh, Palanite Drill and Shooting as his skill access, and the rookie um, will only get Palanite Drill as the primary skill set there as well. I'm not even going to go into secondary skills because you know how worthless secondary skills generally are. So that's that's really the um, that's the the list for enforcers and subjugators, and that is the uh, the breakdown of the skill access that they can get there as well. Um, moving on now to your actual enforcer squad equipment list. Now this is pretty good. Like I said, they've got all the gears and no ideas these guys. Um, but your palanite basic weapons here. Um, Remember, these are Palanite weapons, not Subjugator weapons. We're going to get into the Subjugators in a minute. But your Palanites, your basic Palanites, get Enforcer Bolt Guns for 50 credits or Enforcer Shotguns for 60 credits. Now, your Enforcer Bolt Gun is better than a normal Bolt Gun by quite a lot. They're 50 credits, so they're actually cheaper. And they have a 4-up ammo instead of a 6-up ammo, which is fantastic. Now, these Bolt Guns are... Incredibly, incredibly good damage um, output and just awesome with the 4 plus ammo there as well. Um, however, you know, don't be that guy and spam them. I know that you totally can on these guys, but uh, I don't know. It, it just feels really cheesy when you bring, bring a load of Palanites with, uh, with bolt guns. But I guess they do lack in other areas, so there's argument for, for doing that as well. But I just think spamming anything is generally a no-no for me. The Enforcer Shotgun, however, uh, is 60 credits, which is cheaper than your general combat shotgun, but they are basically, effectively, a combat shotgun. Uh, there's no difference there as well. They've got Salvo and Shredder Rounds. Um, the Shredder Rounds are very, very useful because they are a template, flame template, so 
that's a really nice thing to, to have access to. Um, that's that. Those are your basic weapons for your Palonites, basically. Um, you've then got your close combat weapons. You've got shock batons and shock staves. Um, the shock baton is 30 credits and has parry. The shock stave is 25 credits and has um, versatile. So I would say um, the shock stave is my preference generally, not only because it's cheaper, but versatile is such a great thing to have. However, shock baton might be better on your Palonite captain to keep him alive with that extra parry. Um, horses for courses, really. They're both quite good, um, but they're both a bit expensive. I would say the shock, shock stave is generally a bit better there. In terms of pistols, they all get a stub gun, so you never have to buy another stub gun, really, unless you want to have two of them, but they do get auto pistols as well. With the auto pistols, I think they can have um, access to uh, maybe better ammo at some point as well. Um, yeah, so so there you go. That's your Palonite um, pistols there. In terms of your Palonite special weapons, we've got the awesome concussion carbines and sniper rifles too. Now, it's a shame concussion carbines are special weapons. I think they should be basic weapons. They're only 30 credits, um, and they're really, really good. They're a strength 3 um, short-range 3-inch uh, template which is really cool and negates your um, fact that you've got very average ballistic skill and also means you can hit stuff like um, without with, you know hit stuff like corpse grinders without having to make willpower checks they can be quite useful for that they're, they're not particularly high damage output but they're just they're just useful they're nice and tactical um, and they have concussion obviously so if you are playing on high 3d terrain with lots and lots of big pitfalls and stuff then concussion carbines can really like really work for you and be quite fun weapons um, you've also got the sniper rifle, the enforcer sniper rifle, which is like a long rifle except it has rending. Uh, rending is lovely, so on a six to wound it's double damage basically, or, or extra extra one damage or whatever, so pretty powerful, and those sixes seem to come up quite a lot for me whenever I've got uh, rending on anything. Um, so there you go, nice to have, and they're 35 credits as opposed to 30 credits on a, a regular long rifle I believe. So those are your Palonite weapon choices. Moving on to your subjugator weapon choices. Now these are the guys with the slightly better armor. These guys get quite limited access to stuff. Now your basic weapon is only one. There's only one option of your basic weapon. So you can't have bolt guns or shotguns on these guys. You can only have your subjugation pattern grenade launcher. Which is, uh, well it's a grenade launcher that comes with frag and stun grenades instead of crack grenades on your regular grenade launcher. These are 50 credits which is pretty cool. Um, so they're a bit cheaper than your standard grenade launcher, um, but they still have the same um, crappy ammo um, unreliability about them. However, you're only really often using grenade launchers for the frag, you're not often using crack. You can buy crack for them of course, but your stun grenades, are, hmm, stun grenades aren't great. Frag grenades are pretty great though, um, so there you go. Close combat weapon options, you, of course you have the shock bat and the shock stave, uh, same as your palolites, but you also have the vid vigilance pattern assault shield here for 40 credits. Now the assault shield adds, adds armor to you from your front arc, but it also add, it is also a close combat weapon, so you can use it to, um, it has knockback by the way, so you can charge people, knock them back and not have to suffer um, repercussions from that, which is quite cool. So the, the, the assault shield is very, very valuable, I think. A uh, really nice little tool to have. They're 40 credits, though, so they are quite expensive, but you can have an entire gang of just subjugators with assault shields and um, grenade launchers, which is quite cool, or assault shields with shock staves, which is also really nice. In terms of your pistols, you've got auto pistols, of course, and stub guns, but again, I'll mention that the stub guns are something that you get for free anyway, so if you wanted an extra stub gun then, then fine, but I can't see why you'd do that. Heavy weapons are only accessible to subjugators, you don't get heavy weapons on your palonites. Um, so we've got two options here, the first one is your heavy concussion ram, that's 70 credits and it's pretty cool. Uh, the next one is your SLHG pattern assault ram which is uh, 90 credits. Uh, they're, both, they're both pretty cool, um, they're very expensive for what they do though. Um, I'll probably get into those at some point. I think I might have covered them in a previous video, actually, those ones, but um, if I've got time, I'll get into exactly what those two do. In terms of war gear, though, grenades, we've got um, choke gas grenades, frag grenades, photon flash grenades, smoke grenades, and stun grenades. Uh, out of those, I would say that the, the photon flash and the smoke grenades are both very useful, particularly because they're 15 credits each. I love flash grenades on any gang. Um, smoke grenades can be very useful with enforcers as well, though. 
for armor, we've got hardened flak armor for palamites, um, and we've got hardened layered flak armor for subjugators. Now, hardened layered flak armor, it gets a bit confusing with all these, but hardened layered flak armor, um, like layered flak armor, except hardened means that you reduce the AP on a weapon. So, say for example, you get hit by a power sword um, and it has minus two AP, all of a sudden it's minus one AP. So that's, that's pretty cool. That's what hardened does basically, in a nutshell. Gang equipment, we have an ammo cache for 60 credits, just not worth it at all, if you ask me, so I'm going to just skip that one. Uh, and personal equipment, there's actually quite a lot of stuff on here. Um, we've got bio boosters, bio scanners, choke gas grenades for your grenade launcher, dum dums uh, for your stub gun, frag rounds for your auto pistol, which is really cool for 10 credits. Infrasight, 40 credits, uh, that's what you stick on your, um, that's what you stick on your, uh, what do you call it, your sniper rifle. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, you've got crack grenades for your grenade launcher, of course, which are 35 credits, though, which is very expensive. Um, we've got man stopper rounds for your auto pistol. 10 credits there, awesome. Really, really great man stopper rounds. Um, you've also got penetrator rounds for your bolt gun, which are really cool, too. I'll go into those at some point, too. Photo lumens, uh, photo flash, photon flash grenades for your grenade launcher for 15 credits. Really, really good. Respirators for 15, stim slug slashes for 30, scare gas grenades and smoke grenades for your grenade launcher. Um, for both of those as well. So there you go. Um, so as you can see, it's quite restrictive. There's some really nice stuff on here. The Palanite basic weapons are far more powerful than the um, Subjugator basic weapon, which is a grenade launcher. But, you know, being able to have both options is great. Um, so again, just reiterating that I think the, the most optimal uh, enforcer list is usually one that is mixed with Palanites and Subjugators. I'm sure people will agree with me on that. Um, again, I've seen full Palanite lists usually do better than full Subjugator lists, I think. Um, but you, you might disagree with that, but I think you can just have more bodies and slightly higher damage dealing weapons regardless of not being quite as protected with the armor. Um, I've always found that having really high armored stuff, for some reason I just never make the armor saves anyway. Like It never works for me, having great armor. And if you're on the floor all the time getting pinned, then... Um, then you're losing anyway most of the time. So there you go. Um, now, what else have we got? We've got your Palanite drill skills now. So I'm going to move into that and just give you the six, to give you a rundown of the six skills that we've got in this skill set. And these are pretty cool. Um, your first one is got your six. Got your six. Um, so once per round, if this fighter is standing and active, as soon as a visible enemy fighter declares a charge double action, but before it is carried out, a fighter may interrupt the enemy fighter's activation by performing a shoot basic action, targeting the enemy fighter whose action they have interrupted. If the enemy is pinned or seriously injured as a result, their activation ends immediately and their, act uh, their actions are not made. Really, really cool. So basically this is Overwatch. Um, this is Overwatch, but um, just for being charged directly. So it's slightly more situational, but it's pretty cool. It's worth mentioning that it doesn't look like it actually takes your um, activation token away from you. Or does it? Um, yeah. And their activation, yeah, so uh, that, that's pretty cool. Um, so I really like that one. That's probably my favorite out of the bunch, actually. You got your six. Um, the next one is Helmore's Justice. Now, Helmore's Justice is just something that you're never going to take unless you really fucking hate people and you just don't want to be liked in general uh, in this life. And this, this one does. When this fighter performs a coup de grace, um, <laughs> they may roll twice on the lasting injury table and choose which results to apply. Why would you do that unless you're going to use it the opposite way round and be really nice and choose the nicest one for your opponent and just um, and offer them cash or something. That, 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 that is something that you could do with this, right? Is you could roll twice and then go, I'll tell you what, mate, I'll either kill your guy or you can pay me money and we'll, put, we'll give him an eye injury or something. Uh, <laughs> or you can go out cold. Um, pretty cool. So you could do that, but um, yeah, it's just an awful, awful skill. Like, why would you pick that one? In general, I can't really see anyone taking that one. I'd, I'd be quite be quite keen to know your thoughts on that one. Helmore's Justice. The next one, not a very good one either. Um, in fact, it's dreadful. Uh, is non-verb non-verbal communication. If this fighter is standing and active, they can attempt to make the following action: comms. Now, this is a double action. 
Pick a friendly fighter within six inches, that fighter can immediately make a cool check. If the cool check is passed, their vision arc is extended to 360 until the end phase. So fucking what? That is dreadful. Who cares? So you have to sacrifice by doing a double action, hope that someone's within six inches, hope that they pass their cool check, and what they get for it is a 360 vision arc. Dreadful, dreadful skill. No need to talk about that one. Four, restraint protocols. Uh, rather than performing a coup de grace, this fighter may instead perform a restrain simple action. This fighter is adept at shackling their opponents, even in the heat of battle. Each time this fighter performs this action, make a note that they have restrained an enemy fighter, and during the wrap-up, add one to the dice roll to determine if an enemy fighter has been captured for each enemy fighter that has been restrained. Ah, uh, I mean, it's okay, but it's just not a very, not very great skill overall. Um, you know, most of the time in our campaigns, we actually forget to to do that capture roll, which is because uh, we, you know, when you when you win B and you feel really sorry for your opponent, you tend to just not. In my experience, you tend to not um, do the capture roll, just neglect it because you don't want to rub salt in the wound too much. But it's it's definitely a valid strategy for campaigns is is capturing fighters. So um, I, you know, I know a lot of people um, really do use that mechanic a lot. We kind of neglect it a little bit, to be honest here. Um, just because we like to be nice to each other, I suppose. Um, But yeah, it's an interesting one. It's certainly not the best of the bunch, though. The next one is uh, teamwork. Uh, When a fighter with this skill is activated, they may make a group activation as if they were a champion. Um, If this fighter is a champion, they may activate activate two instead of one. Um, And if it's a leader, they can activate three instead of two. So there you go. Um, it's It's quite cool in a clutch, but again, it's not particularly an optimal skill. It's a bit of a funny one, um, but you know, it's it's useful. It's just not something I would take personally. The next one's quite good though, and that's threat response. If an enemy fighter ends their movement within six inches of this fighter after performing a charge double action, and if this fighter is standing and active and has a ready marker on them, this fighter may immediately activate and perform a charge double action, moving towards the charging. So basically you get to counter charge, which is really, really cool. Um, this one, it does actually state that you lose your ready marker, so it's a bit different, but it's pretty cool if you've got a close combat guy um, and someone either charges you or charges someone else within six inches, you can then charge in uh, and, and do them in, um, and you get, to, uh, you get to interrupt, which is pretty cool. So got your six and threat response are both sort of interruption skills and both very useful, I reckon, but on your champions i'd still definitely go with your cunning and shooting skills generally and the same on your leader to be honest the, the shooting skills are generally better than these palanite drill skills i would say so there you have it that's um that's your palanites and your subjugators um in terms of um loadouts and whatnot like i said um with these guys you they're pretty elite, you know, so it's hard to actually squeeze in a lot of bodies in a list. Um, if you go with just Palanites, you're able to usually get more guys because the subjugators are so much more expensive. Not only are they 10 credits each extra uh, at base cost, but their um, their weapons are usually more expensive as well. Certainly the shields being 40 credits and the um, grenade launchers being 50 credits um, does make them a bit more expensive generally. But, um, I mean, you can get sort of, I think you can get probably about six subjugators into a basic uh, sort of just subjugator list, whereas with your Palanites, you could probably get seven to eight in there, Um, but you're looking at one or two of them being armed with just stub guns, perhaps. Um, I would always suggest a mixture of um, Palanites and subjugators in a starting list. Um, I think when I did it, I had... uh, I had mostly Palanites, I think, maybe two subjugators... um, in the list, the leader was a as was a palanite with a concussion carbine uh, and a shock stave, so that was quite cool. Uh, I then had a champion that had the sniper rifle with Overwatch, uh, and I had a subjugate champion, I believe, who had a riot shield and um, and a and a baton of some sort, shock stave or whatever. Um, and then I had a bunch of guys with either bolt guns, shotguns, um, la di da. Um, and I think I had a specialist. Yeah, I had one specialist with a concussion carbine as well, because I just really like the concussion carbines. And it's worth mentioning that your concussion carbines are 30 credits as opposed to your your um, next cheapest basic weapon option, which is uh, you enforce a bolt gun at 50 credits. So if you can squeeze in a couple of concussion carbines, then it's worth doing because they're decent for 30 credits, you know, um, and that is your cheapest basic weapon. You can't get las guns, you can't get auto guns or whatever. 
if you want to go down a slightly, uh, if you want to play a very similar gang, but go down a slightly more uh, hordy slash um, less elite route, then I would suggest going with the um, with the bad zone enforcers actually, which is the new the new guys. So they're basically the same in terms of the stat line, but you get access to scum. You also get access to some cheaper weapons like auto guns and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, well, that's that's. I think that list is now going to end up almost replacing this list in some ways. But for those purists among you who I see, there's, there's actually quite a lot of people on YouTube that play play subjugators. Um, I see subjugators a lot uh, online anyway, and subjugators they're quite fun. They certainly fulfil a role, and they've got their own place in Necromunda, and they're pretty cool. Just being that one gang that's got very high armor and are really really hard to put down. However, small gangs mean early bottle rolls and when you have got no access to leadership skills on your leader you can't get that all important iron will um, so you tend to be bottling out quite quickly that said you've got decent cool um, stats not great cool but decent cool better than average I would say across the board so um, you're not bottling as quickly as, uh, as some gangs but um, yeah it's it's not it's not great uh, I think you want to try and get the bite point on this gang with, with numbers to start with. And if you can squeeze sort of seven guys in, I'd say that would be a safe bet. Sometimes eight if you really can stretch to that. Um, if not, then um, yeah, six guys is difficult because if you're starting with five or six guys and one goes down, then you're immediately taking bottle checks. That's always something that's that's worth thinking about. And that's usually the problem with Ogrins as well on a completely separate note there. So, that was my guide for um, Enforcers, basically. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I didn't get into the specifics with the weapons exactly, um, but I can do that another time, I think. Um, you know, but generally speaking, I think you're probably going to know what most of these things do. Um, I've highlighted what the Enforcer bolt gun's differences are, the Enforcer shotgun, the... Um, the, the sniper rifle, the concussion carbine particularly, but um, in terms of some of the other weapons, they're, they're okay. They're not amazing. Um, they're not going to set the world on fire, but, um, but there you go. Um, so yeah, please like, share, subscribe, and um, get, get some comments in here. Let me know what your favorite lists are for enforcers. Let me know uh, how you think they perform overall, where you'd put them in terms of a tier. Um, I'm not quite sure where I'd put them in a tier, actually. I think I'd probably put them somewhere near the middle. Um, I certainly wouldn't put them up the top because I think there are quite a few lists that will just walk all over them. Um, why I think that? Because I've seen it happen in games. Um, and I just think the stats throughout really do let these guys down. Like I said, um, all the gears, no ideas um, is how I sum up enforcers, basically. But I'd actually say that they are a good beginner gang to play because they're relatively simple. Um... You can buy a box of enforcers and you don't need to get any extra um, stuff really. They have a box of palanites and they have a box of subjugators. You can just buy one box of each of those and um, you can make any list out of it pretty much. All the weapons are available on those basic sprues without having to go to Forge World or anything. Um, and yeah, you've only got three fighter types essentially. So um, quite an easy gang to get into and they're, they're quite forgiving for beginners too because you've got that nice armor and you've also got some really high damage output as well. So they're quite nice to use if you're a beginner in Necromunda. So I would say, um, yeah, definitely one of the one of the beginner friendly gangs along with Warlock and a couple of others um, so worth worth uh, thinking about if you're if you're getting into Necromunda for the first time um, but if you are getting into Necromunda for the first time you're probably not watching my videos because they're <laughs> they're probably a little bit advanced for you but I hope this does um, give you some help if you are a beginner um, or a, a more experienced player uh, either way um, I hope you enjoyed it anyway so that's that's me over and out um, thank you again to my Patreons um, really really appreciate that and um, anyone who's um, anyone who's tuned in and watched any of these videos I really really appreciate your time um, and support awesome stuff so thank you very much peace out